Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today we're going to talk about code reviews. I'm going to start with the fundamentals of what is a code review and how do you do it, and then kind of dive into some tips I've just learned over the years on how to do a code review well. Now, this is a semi heated topic. Some people really hate code reviews, other people really love them. As you can probably assume from this video, I am a big fan of code reviews. I think that they add a lot to your project and your team and just make things go a whole lot smoother. But let's just start with a quick explanation of what a code review is. You can see in the Wikipedia article here, it just says it's an examination of source code intended to find mistakes and with the goal of improving overall software quality. Reviews are done with pair programming, informal walkthroughs, or formal inspections. Now, so before we go further, I really want to dive into this last sentence right here. So code reviews can be done live with pair programming where you're just kind of going through and watching as the other person's coding and you're coding together and constantly looking for errors or issues or things that need to be fixed or done better. The same is true with uh, mob programming where you just have three or four people working on the same thing. The code's constantly being reviewed and you don't necessarily need these formal inspections that they're talking about. Now, if you're not working in a situation like that and you're doing things just kind of, you know, you get a task, the more standard way, you get a task, you go do that task, you check it in, you get another task, you go do that task solo, you check it in, and maybe you have stand-ups and meetings to talk about these tasks, but you're not coding together. In those cases, that's where these formal inspections really come in helpful. And these can be done a couple different ways with a bunch of different tools. You can do them before you commit, so there are tools that will take your existing code that's ready to go in, submit it for a code review, and then kind of bundle that all up. And then once it's approved, it just can get automatically committed into the, the workflow, or you can do it manually. And then there are um, other tools or other options in some of the tools to just do the code reviews after it's committed. So it gets committed, and maybe it runs through the automated testing and the automated build. Once that's all good, the code review pops up, and the person who's in charge of reviewing those can take a look at it and go through it. But I, that doesn't really make a lot of sense without taking a look at what these tools look like. So I pulled up here just a quick list of some of the tools that are available on Wikipedia. And I've used a couple of these. I don't wanna dive into any one specifically, but I'm just gonna pull up a screenshot from the Crucible one right here to just kind of show what I'm talking about, what kind of things you'll see. So essentially you're gonna get, if you're the reviewer, you'll get a, a page or a, a tab in an app, depending on how you're doing it, that looks somewhat like this, that shows the changes and then has a way to put in comments about it and either approve or deny a specific change or an entire change. So if you see errors and there are issues in there, you could deny the code review and then put in notes about what the problem is. A lot of times though, what you'll see is more of a discussion, kind of uh, some of these I think are, are a little bit more discussion, uh, but they're also talking about a mistake there, I guess. So, but you'll see a lot of this where it's just, is this the, there are like questions, like is this the best way? Here's a suggestion for a different way. And then it can lead into a full conversation. Or, you know, to be honest, a lot of the time you'll see just everything gets approved and there's no comment at all. Those I think are kind of the least valuable type of reviews and they tend to be what makes people stop doing code reviews. But like I said, I don't wanna just talk about the tools. I think there, there's a lot of value in just trying out the different tools and going through them all. Again, right here on Wikipedia, just find a quick list of a bunch of tools. You can try them all out yourself. But I wanna talk about the different things to look for in a code review, why you should do them and what you're really trying to stop. The number one thing is, of course, bugs, right? If you're looking at the code, you want to be looking first to make sure that the thing that is supposed to be in this change list, if it's a new feature, a bug fix, um, something else, whatever it is, you want to make sure that it's bug free, that the thing does what it's supposed to do. The change list it does the thing that the description says. If it says it fixed a bug, you make sure that the code in there is fixing that bug. It's not doing other things and it's doing that one thing correctly. You also want to make sure that it's not introducing new bugs. So if you look through, this is especially true on 
bigger systems or bigger projects. If you look through it, you may notice that they're using a system just a little bit wrong or they're making an assumption in the code that might not really line up with how the code works and is gonna cause issues later on down the road. And this is really important, but it's not everything. And it tends to be where people often just kind of drop off. They look for the bugs, they don't see any bugs, they hit okay and they're done. But there are some other things that you really want to watch out for and take advantage of code reviews to avoid. Uh, the next thing I would say is the just general coding standards. When you're doing a review, if you find that the code in there doesn't match the rest of the code, you should point that out and ideally just deny it. Make sure that new code going in constantly matches the standard of the project. Now this could be anything from variable naming. It could be as simple as, are they using underscores for private members or not? Do we require them to? Uh, whatever it is, you wanna stick with a single set of standards and make sure that every check-in is just following those standards. It may seem like a minor thing, but over time it builds up into a big giant mess where you've got you know, one way is done over on this side of the project, it's totally done a different way on this side of the project, and it, like I said, it becomes a disaster, and it gets harder for new programmers to get into the project. So watching for coding standards, you know, making sure that they're not naming things terribly, like that's, that this is, I guess, one thing that does pop up a lot in code reviews. I, like I said, bugs, number one, most people drop out, but the people that go further tend to focus a lot on things like variable names and um, mainly just variable names and method names. And those are very, very, very important, but if you have to bring them up constantly every code review, it's not sticking for those developers that they need to name shit right. Good names are important and code reviews are a good way to catch bad names. And just go through there and recommend some new names for things and hopefully teach them to name things well. But you also wanna look for things like class length, making sure that they're not building up some big giant monolithic class that could be refactored into multiple little classes that do one thing and follow single responsibility principle. And just making sure that things like methods are at the correct scope and you know things that should be private are private, things that should be public are the only things that are public and nothing else. Uh, essentially just making sure that things are clean and like I said, matching your standards. But that's not all. There are other things to look out for. Like uh, you wanna make sure that they're not rebuilding any existing code. It's really easy in a bigger project to find multiple implementations of the same thing. Maybe it's something as simple as getting a flat vector, right? They just need to get a vector with only the Y direction to see which way they're facing, get rid of that tilt. Um, you may already have an extension method that does that and then find that in the code, they've rewritten all that code right into their, their specific use case for it. And in that case, you wanna point out, hey, we have extension methods for this, go use those instead. And it could be something a little bit bigger, like they're going into a different, um, a different system and re-implementing something that's already there in that system that they just didn't notice. Maybe because the thing was named wrong or they didn't search well enough or they didn't know what to look for. And in that case, you just, again, want to point them to the correct piece of code that already works so you don't end up with duplicate code paths to attempt to do the same thing. The biggest problem there is you know, it ends up with a lot of copy-paste stuff and or feeling like copy-paste, but it's even worse because you can't easily find the references to them. So you end up with a lot of stuff that when one thing needs to change, you know, it changes in one spot, doesn't change in the other, and then stuff breaks and you end up blowing a lot of time on it. Plus it's just bloating the code base. You wanna keep it as small and tight as possible. So reuse things and make sure that people know the things are there to reuse. But watch out for that when you're reviewing anybody's code. And another thing to watch out for is just people doing things the hardest way possible. So I've seen this, I don't know how many times, especially in Unity projects, people are building out systems or recoding things that already exist or there's already a built-in method for. I mean, I've seen people rebuild out functionality for things like vector3.distance just to figure out how far away an object is from another object. It already exists. And that's a, a very like, strong example of missing stuff, but there's a lot of stuff like that where 
you'll find people just doing things in a way that seems like they're going the hard route and they just probably don't know about the easier way to do that. So you want to look around for issues where you think things could be simplified or code that just seems like it's recreating something or we're doing things just the harder way and give them tips on how to do it the easy way or the cleaner way. Now, of course, going the easy way could also be bad for performance. So you want to look for those too. Like, are they doing something that is going to kill performance or could be optimized relatively easily? Are they doing some sort of action in a loop that doesn't need to be there? Or is there you know, some little math trick that's going to speed this function up by 10 times? And if you see things like that, you want to look out for those and just point them out. And again, deny the code review and tell them the, the best way to do things. And this could also be something like just are they generating a bunch of garbage without thinking about it? Garbage collection can be a big issue in game development. So if you see that they're doing something that's generating a lot of garbage and you know of a way to do the same thing without generating all that garbage, you know, point it out, deny the review, send them the correct way to do it, or have a discussion about it and explain. I guess that's an important part too. I'll talk about that in just a moment though. Um, before, before I go on to that though, the other thing to watch for is just copy pasted stuff. So if you see a lot of uh, code that they've copied and pasted, you know, if they've copied something twice, get a little concerned. If they've done it three times, automatically deny it and look for the way to refactor and clean that up so that you're not getting a bunch of that copy paste crap. Now back on to communicating these things with the actual person that's getting their code reviewed. It's really important to make sure that when you're doing it, you're not attacking them. The point of a code review isn't to say, hey, your code shit, it sucks, throw it away, do it again. The point is to show tips on how to do things better. It's, it's a lot about learning and about teaching each other. And when you're doing these, you should be learning things too. If you're on a team where the skill level is at least similar and you're not you know, the only senior person on your team, you should definitely be picking things up as you're going through each other's code. You should be learning little tips or tricks that the other person is using or picking up some other patterns. And it's also good to have junior developers review code going the other way too. Now they may not need the ability to just deny and block it, but they should at least be continuously reviewing stuff and just understanding how things are done at the higher level in the company, I guess, and get an idea and pick up new tricks you know, again, and especially pick up design patterns. It's a great way for newer developers to learn patterns because you know, sometimes hearing the patterns and seeing them in a little sample doesn't make a lot of sense. It's hard to understand, but then they see it implemented in their actual project that they're working on and it clicks. So like, oh, okay, now I understand what that pattern is, how to actually use it in a real world environment and where we're using it and why it, why it makes sense there. So you wanna make sure that those are happening that way too. But again, back to just um, good code reviews, you wanna make sure, again, that you're teaching, not criticizing, you're offering just positive stuff. Um, if there's an issue that pops up in many, many places, you might wanna just you know, note it in one place and note that it's in other places or maybe lightly mark them, but don't give them you know, a big giant pile of text in there about how this thing's wrong in 30 different places, right? Like if they named a variable wrong, give them a note that says, hey, your variables need better names, they should be more descriptive. Don't do it on every single variable, right? Because the problem is you end up with a bunch of crap in there and people aren't gonna read it all, right? They're gonna go, oh, okay, it's just complaining about this one thing over and over and they're gonna overlook the other important thing. Now I've been doing a slightly different version of code reviews online and in, in these ones, I'm not really reviewing specific changes or you know, a specific subset of things. It's more just taking a quick look at the entire project and giving more of an architectural review and then diving into some minor code things that could be updated. And I wanna just make sure that you understand that these are quite a bit different from just your standard daily code review. Again, those should be done essentially after any big check-in or sometimes after every check-in. It really depends a bit on the project and your manpower, 
But you want to make sure that you're not avoiding them. Don't do them, you know, just randomly. Oh, yeah, we did code reviews last month. Or we're doing code reviews on this one thing one time. You know, make sure that you're reviewing them relatively commonly. Now, I, I'd do it for almost every check-in or at least every merge. So if they're working on another branch and building up a system, when it's merged back in, at least do a review there. Go through and just look for these things because catching it then is a whole lot easier and a whole lot cheaper, a whole lot faster than waiting until it's in a build, out and released, and somebody stumbles across the bug or waiting until next year when somebody is going back into that code, trying to modify it and realizing that it doesn't match the rest of the stuff. It's a bit of a mess and you know, it's hard to understand, hard to follow, and hard to maintain. So you want to hit these things as often as you can. Keep stuff clean. You know, keep reviewing things. And, and most important, remember to just look for opportunities to learn when you're doing these code reviews. Look for you know, things that you didn't know about. If you don't understand it, try to figure out what it's doing. And if you still can't understand it, leave a note and have them fix the code so that it's readable and understandable. All right, that's kind of all I wanted to talk about with code reviews right now. Uh, I did set up a little survey to get an idea of how many people are using code reviews in their projects at work or I guess at home. And I'll put a link to that down below. Just kind of curious and also looking for other tips that people have with doing code reviews, you know, suggestions that you might have for ways that totally blew up or ways that went really well and you know you saw a lot of good benefits from. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, keep coding.